بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزان علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to continue our study of Mafatih al-Hayat by Ayatollah Jawadi Amudi Hafadahullah. As you remember, in the last session, we started discussing about how we should treat animals. And we already mentioned uh, some ways of interacting uh, with animals and what types of benefits we can responsibly uh, take from animals. The fourth item is to benefit from some animals for our uh, nutrition as food. And here, as you know, Islam is very uh, clear that we cannot use all types of animals for our you know eating and as food some of them we have to avoid and only some of them are good to be used and even those which are permissible to be used we have to consider few things one is that we shouldn't consume meat too much we should not you know kill keep killing animals and eating them as a hadith says don't make your stomach graveyard of animals so we can reasonably use certain animals for food and if this is done properly it would not be done uh, in the way that it is harming the environment or you know animals even animals which are used as food in Islamic uh, understanding of the world and in Islamic understanding of the purpose of creation uh, we would not consider it as a waste we would not consider it as a just killing animal if they are used to benefit continuity of human life even for them it's good but if they are used for sinful usage or as just killing them for leisure or killing them without any purpose these are problems and then even those things that you are permitted to use you should be very considerate in raising them growing them and looking after their needs and how to treat them and when you are going to for example slaughter them you have to be very careful and do it in the way that would be uh, least painful you cannot say okay so animal you know no, doesn't matter you know how it's killed no you have to be very very considerate so today we will inshallah mention some of the things that we have in our hadith about uh, a slaughtering and killing animals as food and then there is a discussion about rights of animals animals have some rights that we have to observe some of them are even for people who may not be owning animals my neighbor maybe has an animal for example has a cow maybe has a cat 
and if my neighbor is not there or is not able to provide that animal with food or with drink I am responsible so it's not just the right of animal on the owner or the one who keeps animal we all have certain responsibilities and inshallah we will talk about these things so Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli says the general spirit of Islamic teachings is that we should not kill animals which are not harmful which are not dangerous unless it is for food so if an animal is dangerous then to save human life it is permitted if an animal is also used as a food at the service of life again it is permissible like in the nature animals also some of them for example you know eat plants some animals eat other animals so it's a cycle of life human beings also can benefit from animals as their food or to protect their lives from their danger and harm apart from these two we should not kill animals and then he says we mention only some of the things here about zebh about manners that should be observed about a slaughtering one is that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you have to be kind even to the animal that you want to slaughter it should not be done brutally or without showing kindness to the animal for example there is a hadith in Allah muhsinun yuhibbul ihsan Allah himself is muhsin ihsan means to do good to be kind Allah is doing good is kind is benevolent benefactor yuhibbul ihsan he loves also ihsan in Allah ya'mur bil adl wal ihsan in Islam ihsan is very very important adl is the bottom line well, we have to go above level of justice we have to go up to the level of ihsan in Allah ya'mur bil adl wal ihsan so if I just don't do zulm and respect rights of people is not enough I should do more I should be kind to them وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنٌ We have to be muhsin. So, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُحْسِنٌ يُحِبُّ الْإِحْسَانِ This is the general principle. فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْقِتْلَهِ وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الذَّبْحَةِ this hadith is narrated from Rasulullah in Kanzul Ummal by Muttaqi Al-Hindi, one of the famous Sunni scholars. This is a very uh, well-known book and he has quoted this hadith from the Prophet that because Allah is Muhsin and loves Ihsan, if you are going to kill or slaughter an animal, depending on what type of animal, you know, and what is the permissible way of killing them you must do ihsan ahsanu dhibha means you should do it in a kind way carefully we have another hadith for example again from rasulullah inna allaha kataba alaykum al ihsan fi kull shay this is in Musnad of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. In Allah kataba alaykum al ihsan fi kull shay. Allah has written down, has registered as a necessity that you should do ihsan in every aspect. Fa'idha qataltum fa'ahsinu al qitlah wa idha dhabahtum fa'ahsinu dhabha. It's very similar, this part. If you are killing or slaughtering animal, you should 
do it kindly and also uh, if for example uh, it's a matter of zip the knife which is used has to be sharp so that it doesn't take time and it would not uh, cause pain and also it should be prepared in advance and very quickly for example Allah Majlisi Rahmatullah Alai has mentioned in Biharul Anwar Iza Zabaha Ahadukum Fal Yujhiz if one of you is going to a slaughter should do it fast make everything ready in advance and do it fast so that there is no uh, unnecessary pain the least pain uh, possible for the animal and uh, still Islam says you have to be sh uh, you know showing some kindness be very careful for example this hadith you know is very moving and you see how much Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was paying attention to the details and in a society that they had no problem in general they had no problem even about killing human beings as I have said in some lectures you know uh, looting attacking other tribes you know sometimes was taken as a kind of pride but Rasulullah pumped this society with mercy and says even with animals you have to be kind and merciful so this hadith is about a person that Rasulullah saw he was trying to slaughter an animal a sheep and had put his foot on the face of the sheep and was trying to sharpen his knife and this poor animal was uh, not able to even you know say anything so the hadith says that wahiya savi to ilay by looking at this person was showing uh, pain Rasulullah blamed him and said what are you doing do you want to kill him twice why you didn't prepare in advance and don't do it nicely and properly putting your foot on the face of animal and just now you are sharpening the knife you can only appreciate this if you consider that this was 14 centuries ago in a society in which they had no mercy for children uh, for their own children for uh, human beings and unfortunately as uh, still even today we see some people do this with human beings they put their foot on the neck of a human being but Rasulullah says no you cannot do this Haji Nuri Rahmatullah Alai uh, says that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, said you cannot kill animals sabran which means with pain to let the animal die for example you know injure animal and let the animal die no Also, it is uh, recommended, I'm not saying it is uh, haram, but it is makru, so it's better not to do that when animal is uh, slaughtered, to quickly remove the uh, skin is makru. Yukrahu salhu dhabihati qabla bardaha aw qat'i shay'in minha. Late sahib jawahir this great faqih and jurist says it is makru even when animal is killed still maybe this animal has some uh, sensation let the body of the animal gets cold don't quickly remove the skin or cut any part of the animal 
unfortunately uh, sometimes you see in some societies even today uh, they take uh, from a living animal the meat and you know they in some restaurants and you know want to say you know this fresh you know meat and you know, from the back of the animal you know this wild behavior and this uh, uh, you know which is not really human behavior you know you see today two people a living animal you know might, maybe you have seen on uh, you know even some news channels you know they showed some weeks ago this is a custom in some restaurants you know they bring a living animal and then they take the meat etc Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam also said that uh, the animal that is giving milk or for example is bearing a child you know should not be killed and also for example about birds even the birds which can be used for food you have to be careful not to do it without good reason just for you know uh, as a test or as a hunting as a leisure uh, there is a hadith here in Biharul Anwar man qatala usfuran abathan ajja ila Allah yawm al qiyamah wa yaqul if someone kills a sparrow uh, in vain this sparrow on the day of judgment would call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say ya rabbi abduka qatalani abathan wa lam yaqtulni lamanfa'atan your servant killed me in vain he didn't kill me for benefit it's not that he needed me to be you know as a food he just killed me in vain he comp this animal would complain this bird would complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says uh, one of the most wishes things is qatlul bahima to kill animals without reason is one of the worst things then our hadith said that even if you are supposed to do zab for example you need to do zab don't do it in the night Night is made by Allah sakana. Night is made as a time for sukun, for serenity, for you, for animals, for everything. Everything which has life in night should be at peace. Therefore, Shaykh Tusi Rahmatullah Alai in his Nehaya and Nehaya he says wa yukrahu dhibahatu billayl illa inda dharurati wal khawf min fawtaha it's makruh to do dhibh in night unless there is dharurah emergency or the animal might die otherwise you should not do Zabiha in the night. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said uh, people should not go to the nest of the birds or uh, go to the birds and take the birds when they are asleep sleeping and they must uh, be very careful about even you know birds and you know they're asleep and they're night Aban ibn Taqlib says Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam kana Ali ibn al Hussain alayhi salam ya'mur ghilmana Allah yadhbahu hatta yatlu al fajr Imam Zainul Abidin used to say to uh, his servants those who were working for him that don't uh, slaughter animals hatta yatlu al fajr 
night should finish and after dawn then after that you can do that he was saying Allah has made layl sakan not only for human beings for everything including animals the next discussion is about improper use of animals so the number four was about food number five is about improper use of animals uh, for example as we also mentioned a sleeping on the back of a horse or a camel is not good it would tire the animal uh, waiting for example you are talking to someone and you are riding and are on the back of the animal for a long time talking and uh, stopping and the animal you know would be suffering or sitting on one side of the animal so all the weight to be on the right side of the animal or the left side of animal this is also islamically condemned and any improper immoral use of animals one of the things which is also islamically condemned is to make animals fight each other unfortunately even today you know in some uh, countries for example there are uh, roosters they make them fight it with each other or you know some you know goats etc it's not Islamically accepted and the only case that in some uh, hadith is mentioned that might be exception is about the certain types of dogs that they uh, it's maybe part of their uh, training for being uh, trained for security of uh, people or you know animals etc but not uh, as a general thing this is not something which is accepted uh, shooting at animals or you know with arrow or nowadays perhaps we can uh, of course the fuqaha can maybe extend it to you know shooting bullets at animals this is also something which is not uh, permissible there is a hadith that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed by a group of people marra rasulullah ala qawmin nasabu dajajatan hayya wa hum yarmunaha bin nubl rasulullah said some people they had put a for example hen and shooting arrows at this hen which was alive they put it as a target rasulullah said man haula who are these people la'anahumullah although rasulullah was not a person who was cursing but according to this hadith if it is authentic it is in an nawadir by rawandi it shows that how much rasulullah was sad and maybe this is actually not curse as insha maybe it is akhbar maybe a statement means these people are mal'oon already deprived of the mercy of allah because la'ana can be past tense as a statement and can be also uh, past tense but as insha like when you make a dua rahimakallah means may allah's mercy be upon you but if it's a statement means allah's mercy has been upon you so either rasulullah says that these people deserve land or it means that they are already mal'oon how can you take a living bird like a hen or chicken and throw arrows to this animal Th 
there is a hadith that it says kana fi man kana qablakum rajulun ya'ti wakra ta'iran in previous nations there was a person that had found nest of a bird kullama afrakha akhadha farakhu whenever this bird had a child this man was going and taking the child fashaka dhalika ta'ir ila allah ta'ala ma yaf'alu bi this bird complained to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because animals have understanding you know the story of hudhud in the quran the story of namla in the quran so they have understanding this bird complained to allah that look what this man is doing to my children فَأَوْحَى اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِلَيْهِ إِنْ عَادَهُ فَسَأُهُلِكُ After this bird complained, according to this hadith, which is mentioned here by Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli, from the book Hayatul Haywan, Allah said, if he comes one more time, I would destroy him. So we have to be very kind and merciful. And when a religion is teaching its adherents to be so considerate about birds and animals, then you can understand how much it's important to respect human life. And why it says, مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرَ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا if a person kills another person without this person being a mischief maker in the pla on the planet, in this earth, and without Qisas, uh, because he has not killed another person, is like killing all people. Life is very important. In the paper about value of life in Islam, I have explained that any kind of life in Islam is sacred. Burning animals, na'uzubillah, it's considered as a sin to burn animals. To torture animals, it's prohibited, it's haram, it's sin. To burn the places that, for example, there are bees, there are hives, you know, to burn, it's haram. Or it says it is not permissible. Of course, fuqaha should be asked uh, to give their fatwa, but the language here is it's not permissible. And then there is a hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَا مِنْ طَائِرٍ وَلَا غَيْرَهُ يُقْتَلُ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِ إِلَّا سَتُخَاصِمُهُ يَوْمَ الْغِيَارِ Any bird or non-bird, any animal which is killed unjustly, not properly on the day of judgment would complain against this person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So rights of animals also have to be observed and they have uh, you know, this right to complain. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam absara naqatan ma'gulatan wa alayha jahazuha. Rasulullah saw a camel which was loaded with some uh, heavy things, there, were, there was something on it, either uh, some, the, you know, something for sitting or carrying. It says, وَعَلَيْهَا جَهَازُهَا And it was also tied with a rope. So, 
Maghfula left here, abandoned here. This animal cannot sit, cannot go, has to just stay and carry this weight. Faqala ayna sahibuha. Where is the owner of this camel? Falyasta'idda ghadan lil khusuma. He should prepare himself for day of judgment to be questioned and this animal would be his enemy on the day of judgment. Shaykh uh, Shaykh al-Sadduq rahmatullahi in man la yahdhuruhu al has quoted this. Okay, I think for today this is enough because we have rights of animals to mention and uh, I don't want to rush. I just give you the headings, the right for nutrition, food, drink are important and must be observed and inshallah we have many headings here. Right of animals for health and treatment if an animal is ill has the right to be provided with treatment and medicine right for having rest they need to have time and chance to rest right for being able to reproduce and also the right to see friendship coming from us towards them we should be kind to them and befriend the animals and then we have to also understand that animals need to be at least some of them to be together and they should not be kept alone unless it's they are not social so these are things about uh, rights and finally respect for animals they have right to be respected even their beauty for example inshallah we will talk about it imam sadiq alayhi salam says that you should observe respect for animals and part of it is the beauty of the face of animal you should not keep it dirty or ugly or you know in bad shape bad form or na'uzubillah burning it torturing injuring not at all respect when we are talking about respect then you understand everything else inshallah we will talk about this in uh, the next session uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen